So listen, we've all been on a turbulent flight in our lives. Things were a little bumpy. No crash landing, just a little bumpy. Need to rebound, like to land the plane a little softer this week. Here we go, blazing five. That's a hot one. Let's blaze it up. Fire it up. It's Collins blazing five. Jets versus Vikings. Favorites do very well in London. Vikings minus two and a half. The better team, the healthier team. Jets are all banged up, including Aaron Rodgers. They have not trailed in the last three games against the Niners, Texans, and Packers. Darnold's on fire. They also lead the NFL in sacks, so they put constant pressure on you. I think the game will be close. The Jets don't want to be humiliated, but their two wins this year have been against Jacoby Brissett and Will Levis. And that Will Levis game came down to the end. Aaron Rodgers, Morgan Moses, Elijah Vera Tucker, C.J. Mosley, they're banged up. This is not a good spot for the Jets. Favorites do very well when you go overseas. Vikings win a competitive game 27 to 20. Lay the points. Cardinals at 49ers. I'm going to take Arizona seven and a half. That's a lot of points. George Kittle, Christian McCaffrey. Kittle's not going to play. Fred Warner, limited. He may not play. Listen, James Conner, McBride is back. So Trey McBride, the great tight end, is back. Marvin Harrison, four touchdowns in three games. Connor's become a stud. And I just like this Arizona offense. They had a stinker last week. But if you go and look, I mean, Kyler Murray was completing 70% of his throws two of the last three games. I like this offense. Niners defense, third down defense this year stinks. They're all beat up. I'm going to take the Niners to win a close one at home. But seven and a half points for a division game for a pretty desperate Arizona team is too much. 27-23 Niners. Giants at Seahawks. So the wise guys think the number's out of whack. It was much better earlier in the week when the Seahawks were minus like five. But I like Seattle here. Malik Neighbors is not going to play. Devin Singletary, they can't run the ball with Devin Singletary. He's all banged up. Geno Smith's on fire. DK Metcalf on fire. Minus six and a half, I can lay the points. Their defense, I'm sorry, but I think they're getting a couple of their defensive linemen back. I think Seattle was really impressive, like Tampa was last night, in a loss, in a, in a standalone game. The Giants' only win came against Deshaun Watson, who looks like he's cooked. They've been held under 20 points in three of their last four games. Malik Neighbors is out. By the way, uh, Wandale Robinson's banged up. Brian Burns is banged up. This offense is a BB gun, and, and those numbers are with Malik Neighbors. I'm going to take the Seahawks to win 28 to 20. Cowboys at Steelers. I like the Steelers. I liked it better when it was minus one, but I'll take it. Not getting the best of the number. Pittsburgh minus three. Okay, they were beat by the Colts, but they outscored the Colts, did Pittsburgh on the road, 21 to 10 in the second half. This is about Dallas, though. Yippee. They beat the Giants and the Browns. They can't run the ball. 75 yards rushing a game. They can't run the ball, and the Steelers have a great run defense, so it's going to be very Dak reliant. Also, the Cowboys' defense since week two has been bad. You can run on them. What does Pittsburgh do? Run. Brandon Cook's out. Micah Parsons doubtful. Demarcus Lawrence out. Trayvon Diggs banged up. This I get a healthier team at home, and I think Arthur Smith and Justin Fields have been pretty good. I'm going to take the Steelers to win. Again, a competitive game, 28-24. Saints at Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are going to win. I'm going to bet the number five and a half. The Saints have been an unlucky team. Their losses have been Falcons and Eagles, both losses by three points or fewer. Again, five and a half points. Derek Carr, PFF, has them as the highest graded quarterback. Alvin Kamara leads the NFL in scrimmage yards. The Chiefs have trailed by seven or more points in every game. No Rasheed Rice. Their offense has seven giveaways this season. Only the Eagles and the Titans have more. It's a sloppy team now without their star volume receiver. And by the way, Mahomes this season has a passer rating of 116 when targeting Rasheed Rice. Everybody else, it's 82, and he's out. The Saints offense this season has been pretty robust. Points per game first. Third down percentage. Excellent. Second, I'm going to take the Saints to cover. I'm going to take the points all day. Chiefs win another close game, 24 to 23. Remember, Mahomes not targeting Rasheed Rice, 82 passer rating. 
J Mac wincing at that no, jet no, spin. No, 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 no. Listen, uh, just for grading purposes, I see Steelers at two and a half. I'm not trying to get in any arguments here, but you you got a bad number there. That should be two and a half for grading purposes. It should be. I could bet it two and a half right now. So um, I think that's a great bet. I think that's the best bet you've got. And I like you holding your nose and taking the Arizona Cardinals seven and a half. I don't. I'm not man enough to do that. But that's a good bet for you. All right, Eric Mangini. NFL head coach, Jets, Browns, joining us now live. We just had Kirk Cousins on. I mean, it's just, it's crazy to think. Somebody throws for five football fields. Uh, It's just, it doesn't even make sense. You know, I was saying this about Kirk. If you start looking at these guys like Darnold and Baker and Geno, now Kirk's better than those guys historically, but when you've had, look at how many coaches he's had. He had Kevin O'Connell for a bit and Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan and Matt LaFleur. That's a lot of information Kirk Cousins has been able to glean off for years. Eric, I'm watching that last minute 14 with no timeouts. I'm not sure how many quarterbacks in the league can do, can do that. You had to be impressed with that. I was. I, I heard you were very impressed by the official and how quickly he was able to get the ball set. Yeah. You know who wasn't impressed by that is, is Tampa Bay. They weren't impressed by that at all. That, I thought the game was going to be over when, when he completed that pass because typically – with 12 seconds, you don't have enough time to go down and, and spike it. But I, I, I like Kirk Cousins a lot. I really liked when Atlanta went and got him because they've been loaded with offensive weapons. You and I have talked about this for two years now about how, how we thought Atlanta would pop. And they have, they've had subpar quarterback play. And Kirk is a totally different package. And look at the way that, that he's getting these guys to, to – or he's taking advantage of the talent now whether it's it's Drake London, Kyle Pitts coming alive last night. he's He had almost as many catches last night as he had the entire season prior. And this is going to continue. And as Kirk gets more and more comfortable coming off the injury, I think this offense is, con- is going to continue to be explosive because they can also run the ball really effectively. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Baker Mayfield, we said, I was tough on him early, but I said he should Tampa should sign him. I do think he's one of those guys – that um, you don't have to pay him a fortune, therefore he can keep Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. And if you start looking at Darnold, you don't pay him a fortune. Well, look at his receiving core. Geno Smith, not paying him for Kirk Cousins, who's better than those guys, but Kirk has a big contract, but it's not top of the market. I think Baker on this team, I that's about as impressive as you're going to look losing a football game. Your thoughts? <laughs> I, 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 like, I like Baker, and I, I like the fact that what he's done with his second act. And I was happy for him last year. He gets into the playoffs. He gets a new contract. All those things. And and then going into this year, his quarterback's rating is the best it's been. His completion percentage is the best it's it's been. It's 11 touchdowns to two picks. All those things are great. Uh, I don't love how how much he gets sacked. He's about 10% in terms of of how often he's sacked. And you saw last night where it looked like he got rolled up on and and he might have been out. And I think that, that could be something that limits him because his toughness can help him, but it can also hurt him by the type of hits that he takes when he's running the ball or staying in the pocket. The other thing I don't love e- either, Colin, is I like I like humble Baker, humble and hungry. You know, taking shots at Tom Brady. It's uh, don't go back to that to the Cleveland Baker. Uh, I think where he was last year it, it, and that mentality has really served him well. And I hope he doesn't regress regress back when I wasn't success.